Don Giovanni and scale of things, I'm not really a very prolific manslut myself, but there have been certain periods in my life of, shall we say, definite mansluttery. And one of the things I've learned from my experience is that jackhammering a woman for 5 to 10 minutes is usually not enough to get her off. If you actually care about female pleasure, you're going to have to develop some other skills. This has been an expensive cunnilingus joke. Hey, tree off. Try the wine! But I guess it's not a big surprise that pickup artists don't care about female pleasure. The more interesting and surprising thing is that they don't particularly care very much about their own pleasure either, or at least it's not their primary focus. The point of sex for Roosh seems to be to prove again and again that he's a real alpha male, and that he's not a Warcraft playing beta like he used to be. He wants to sleep with a lot of women because of the masculine prestige he thinks it brings him, and he wants the women he sleeps with to be conventionally beautiful for the same reason. Bang! Is honestly one of the most depressing books I've ever read, and I'm a Kafka fan. It's a window into Rusha's soul, which is a void as blank as his stare and as dark as the cover of the book itself. To look at the world through Rusha's eyes is to look at a world where no real companionship between men and women is possible, where sex is a solitary act of self-assertion that never leads to a connection between minds. There's no pleasure and no real eroticism and bang. Only the cold machinations of a man who hates women single-mindedly obsessing over his own sexual high score. This is a miserable view of life and of sex. And I say this not as someone who believes sex is sacred and only good when you're in love or anything fucking gay like that. Even a one night stand can allow you to have some kind of real connection with someone, but only if you're honest and empathetic toward each other and aren't just using each other's bodies so you can add another name to your fucking spreadsheet. God damn. I always thought one of the benefits of sex is that it allows you to escape the walls of your own mind prison and enjoy a less lonely existence, even if only for a couple hours. Of course, it doesn't always work out that way. I'm certainly not saying unrepentant fuck sluttery doesn't have some bad consequences. No matter how honest and careful you try to be, if you have enough bangs, there's gonna come a moment when the person you were just totally casually no strings attached to banging turns to you and says, I have feelings for you that I've never felt for anyone before, and you're gonna think, oh shit. I fucked up. I fucked up bad. And you did fuck up. But it's gonna happen to you too, motherfucker. You're gonna wake up one morning and the person you were just totally casually, no strings attached, not a big deal banging, is gonna walk out the door and then suddenly, oh god, you'll feel the fire burning in the depths of your chest and you'll wonder. Why doesn't, Why doesn't she love me? What are these what are feelings that are happening to me? Am I, am I dying? dying? I hate this. It was supposed to be casual. Casual! I didn't know my soul could attain these depths. Contra voice. Hearken Hark to my voice. voice. What the fuck? Who are you? Why, Why I'm the I'm spirit, the spirit of the little thing, thing you may have forgotten, have forgotten about, about called love. love. Get out of here! I don't do that shit anymore. Well, I'm afraid, well, I'm afraid it's, afraid too, it's late. too late. You see, you see my child, child is already, already inside of me. Well, I will drown that child. I will feel nothing! <laughs> oh, god damn it. God damn you. That's... It's just... It's crass. Try the wine, motherfucker. Alright, give me that. I'll try the wine. I'll suck your goddamn c*** too. Oh, yeah. No, stop. We're not ending there. This video needs a lesson. Because I'm a moral person, goddammit. I'm a social justice feminist. Well, look, I'll say two things. First, people have this idea that feminism means that men can't be men, and sex is over, and it's gonna be like the matriarchal version of The Handmaid's Tale. But no, that's not what it is. I mean, there's maybe like 1 or 0.1% of feminists who think all sex is rape and men are pigs and all that stupid shit, but those women are sad and pathetic and no one listens to them. Really, the sexual requirements of feminism are very minimal. Don't rape people. Don't harass them. Don't abuse them. Don't shout at them in the streets. It's really just not that hard. Second, for your sake, stop counting how many people you've fucking slept with. Women all seem to mysteriously have no idea how many people they've fucked. 
This is charming and adorable, and men should emulate it. Because in the real world, Don Giovanni is a pretty unhappy thing to be. Without Mozart's intensely erotic music propping him up, the Don would come off as cold and joyless. If your goal is to live a voluptuous life, then sh sure, sleep with lots of women. Sleep with lots of dudes, or animals, or whatever you're into. But only if they want to, and only if you want to. I mean, you can embrace absolute pleasure with just one partner, or even by yourself. Human life isn't very long, and we're all stuck in this together. So forget about your fucking list and go spread some pleasure in the world. But to be clear, do not spray your white hot pleasure all over anyone unless they want you to. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just not that hard to understand. God damn. If you liked this video so much, why don't you bang it? But also click like, please. Special thanks to Roman Ulyashev, Kat Stas, Johan Michael Comfort, Nick Wolf, Garrett Lathy, Voron, No No No, Heterodox, and the other patrons who helped me make this video. If you'd like to become a patron, check the link in the thing. Other YouTubers call it the doobly do. Why do they call it that? It kind of makes me angry. Well, YouTube, I've been making videos for months now about the most controversial possible topics, but recently it seems that only one person has had the goddamn balls to make a response. And who's that? Well, his name is the distribu- The distribution- Look, I'm just gonna call him Chesterton, because his avatar is a cartoon of G.K. Chesterton. Now look, Chesterton, we've got beef. Take a seat, Chesterton. Have some grapes. Try the wine. I trust you'll find everything sumptuous. So Chesterton is a Catholic traditionalist YouTuber, and he's made a four-part series of videos titled Lies of the Sexual Revolution, featuring Dan Savage, Lacey Green, Lena Dunham, and me. Wait, why am I in this video? These other people are way more famous than I am. I guess that's good company. I mean, Dan Savage is awesome. Lacey Green does a public service. You know, her videos aren't really for me, but... Why do men think everything has to be for them? Lacey Green's videos are for naive 16-year-old girls, not jaded 28-year-old perverts. And it's fine. Anyway, you've put black bars over our mouths with the word lies, so that's good. In any case, I'm happy to be cast as a promoter of the sexual revolution, so let's do this. And ladies, you may want to dig that bottle of Prosecco out of the back of the fridge, because, I'm gonna warn you in advance, this video is gonna be two weird men on the internet debating about what kind of sex you should have. I'm so sorry. So Chesterton's got beef with my video about pickup artists. Remember, the one about BANG. But of course, the feminist critique of Don Giovanni has the same problem of all feminist critiques of pickup artists. Once you acknowledge that consent is the only necessary requirement for it to be good, how do you criticize a person who pursues it more earnestly? He seems like a less hypocritical version of your everyday person. Well look, GK. One of your main arguments in this video is that feminists have no ground to criticize pickup artists because you claim they believe that the only requirement for good sex is consent. But that's not what most feminists believe. Not what I believe. All consent does is establish that the sex is not rape. And that, Chesterton, is a very low bar to set, both erotically and ethically speaking, and I'm sure you'll agree. There's all kinds of ways that consensual sex can be ethically questionable. For instance, if there's manipulation or deceit involved, or if a person with no emotional involvement exploits someone with a lot of emotional involvement, and so on. And pretty much any feminist I know will acknowledge this. In fact, the raddest of the rad femmes think that pretty much all sex is problematic because of, like, power dynamics. Even if that's what they're into. And as it happens, a lot of them are. <laughs> 
The feminist critique of the pickup artist mentality basically says that Roosh and company treat women as a mere means to sex, without any respect for their wishes or humanity. In my video, I took the ethical issue as red and basically just bashed Roosh for being a bad hedonist. Because at least seeking pleasure is a worthwhile goal. Whereas tabulating your bangs in a futile effort to prop up your needy ego is, um, not. So I took to Chesterton's comments section and we had a brief exchange that got pretty personal pretty fast. He asked me if I knew how damaging sexual promiscuity